How's it going everyone, it's Gadgets Boy. Welcome to another video and in this one, I finally have my hands on the Microsoft Pro X. I saw it at the launch event back in New York and finally it's in the house and we're gonna take a look and talk through it and see what makes this device a special device. Let's get on with it. The Microsoft Surface Pro X is a two-in-one always-on laptop designed with a specific user in mind and a device described as built for web-first experiences by Microsoft and it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's all kind of ultra something. So ultra light, ultra thin, ultra fast, ultra connected. I know that's not a word, but I just wanted to make that list a bit longer and it sounds good. Now, always on connected PC or AC PC is not a new category. I still remember years ago uh, where you could get a dongle from Vodafone, for example, and connect to see a laptop wherever you are, you can get an internet. Uh, but now the difference is that the advancements in technology from innovative tech brands like Qualcomm just means that they get to build a smaller chip that can encompass all that stuff all, all together in one and makes it smaller as well. So not only do you get a PC that's fully mobile, it's also secure, always connected, and very much so that it's a lightweight and a lot more portable. Let's start with the design though. The Surface Pro X is no different from the Surface lineup when it comes to design. It's slick and solid. You get a 13 inch laminated glossy display with slim bezels. The glossy finish make, uh, can make things a little bit difficult to see outdoors when you got bright sunlight. Uh, but that doesn't take away from the fact that this is a very, very, very good, uh, nice display. It has a three by two aspect ratio. Uh, you got 2880 by 1920 resolution with 267 ppi. You have a 10 point mortar touch and a 60 hertz refresh. Uh, I really like its matte finishing, uh, but it's also very prone to fingerprints all around it as well. For ports and connectivity, you get two USB-C ports, but no Thunderbolt 3. Uh, there's no 3.5mm headphone jack. There's no micro SD card expansion like the Surface Pro 7, for example. Uh, but Microsoft kept that MagSafe style charger, which I really like. The charging brick also features a regular USB ports for charging other devices. Again, just means you don't have to carry extra brick with you if you need to charge your phone on the side, for example. On the back, there's a 10 megapixel camera that can shoot 4K videos at 30 frames per second. And on the front is a five megapixel shooter that can shoot 1080p videos at 30 frames per second. You also have the Windows Hello sensor there as well and a dual uh, far field mic setup as well, which works really well. When you think about the specs so far, uh, it means you get startup that's super quick thanks to the window hello uh, facial recognition. If you're a student or attending a briefing, for example, you can capture presentations uh, using that camera and add photos directly to your notes uh, so you don't have to then carry extra camera or uh, worry about making notes or missing out on the session, for example. The front facing camera combined with those microphones make the Surface Pro X a great tool for conference calls via Sky or Zoom or whatever you use. So far, you can start to build a sense of or grasp uh, a sense of what the Surface Pro X uh, is built for and who is aimed at. If you invest in a type cover like this one here, you get a pen that works well on the Pro X's 10 point more to touch display. The keyboard itself is a joy to type on. It has the right amount of bounce on it. The trackpad is a matter of preference uh, in that I like the size of it and it's nice, nice and clicky. The clickiness could be loud, uh, a bit loud for some, uh, but it's more than enough, or you can just get an external uh, mouse to use with it as well. The keyboard is also very quiet, which is very important if you're gonna be typing in a quiet lecture room, uh, or if you're typing in a briefing, for example, it's nice and quiet for that. The Surface Slim Pen and the type cover will cost you extra. Uh, you can also get the extra docking station with more ports for the Surface Pro X. Again, this is gonna cost you a bit more. However, the Slim Pen uh, itself is one of the best I've ever used. Uh, it has 4096 level of pressure. Um, you can also tilt it too, so if you're drawing or sketching, for example, you can tilt uh, to shade and stuff like that. You can replace the, t replace the tip or put a different one there if you prefer. Uh, you can program the top button as well. And uh, at the moment, it's set to just open up the whiteboard application. Palm rejections uh, fills you with a lot of confidence as well. So if you're writing and you know writing away, very in a serious uh, zoned out mode, there's no problem that problems there at all. One more thing, the kickstand is there also, uh, making it very versatile in the way you position it for use. Although still placing it on your lap uh, might be a bit tricky, so uh, bear that in mind. It's stiff enough and easy to adjust as you like, which I really like as well. Under it is where we begin to see the next phase of what the Surface Pro X uh, is all about, so connectivity. Using a SIM ejector tool, you can take off the cover to reveal its SSD drive, which is upgradable. That's if you can find one that fits and is compatible as well. You'll also notice that you can insert a nano SIM card for data on the go, which then leads me on to the next part of this review, which is the processing power. The Surface Pro X is powered by a custom Microsoft SQ1 processor 
It's a 7 watt 64 bit ARM processor, so ARM, uh, with 8 cores, 8 threads, and clock speeds of 3 gigahertz. For graphics, there's uh, an Adreno 685 chip, and you also get a modem in there for 4G LTE speeds. The SQ1 is based on Snapdragon 8CX compute platform designed to deliver a more to day battery instant on up to 40% increase in system wide performance compared to the previous generation. Uh, you got continuous connection with more to gigabit speeds. Windows 10 experience is there as well. You got AI acceleration for some applications and 10 bit HDR video playback and streaming on Netflix or YouTube over LTE or even if you use Wi Fi, thanks to that X24 modem that's in there. So, in the real world, what's the result of this? You get a very responsive device that can be powered on uh, in seconds. A device that doesn't need to load, uh, doesn't need to do a lot of processing before you resume applications from the background or something that's running already like Skype or having to reload your back, uh, your browser you know, in order to read emails or, or anything like that. All your applications can be open at the same time and uh, internet is always on on this, uh, which means you're always connected, which is very important. What's also cool is the fact that you can dynamically switch between Wi-Fi and uh, 4G. So if you're moving around the house, for example, not just outdoors uh, or out and about, it means that you're always connected and it's always going to be reliable. With this, you also get a device that will last, last you uh, all day long without needing to charge it. I basically did a basic test on it running 12 tabs on Edge browser, which is also pretty quick, by the way. Uh, you got some messaging apps open. I played the YouTube videos for 24 hours and the Surface Pro X lasted more than 13 hours. So imagine you need to use this for work. Uh, typical working days is eight hours to nine hours. Uh, so it's more than enough for that as well. For speed, it's super responsive. Uh, working with Microsoft applications, browsing, messaging, etc. Et uh, you have no problems there at all. What's also amazing is that even with this fanless design and all the power, it doesn't sweat it at all when it comes to temperature. Uh, it doesn't get hot and it's very quiet, which I love. The fanless design also means the Surface Pro X is kept slim and still manages to stay uh, super cool, as mentioned already. Every part of the processor, the GPU, the D DSP, uh, CPU, etc., is designed for performance and efficiency. When you purchase one, you get Windows 10 Home uh, operating system one there, but you can upgrade it to Windows 10 Pro for enterprise work purposes. Elsewhere, you have the option for 8 gig or 16 gig of LPDDR4X RAM. You can also opt for a 128 gig internal storage, 256 or 512 gigabytes, uh, which is also removable, so you can easily upgrade it if you need to do so. Uh, before I forget, you also get two watt stereo speakers with Dolby Audio, and it's loud enough, but uh, it misses some real bass in there as well, so uh, you might want to use your Bluetooth headphones for better sound. So far it sounds amazing, so let's uh, address the big elephant in the room, uh, which is apps compatibility. Uh, the Surface Pro X is ARM based, and although it's running 64 bits, but it's running Windows 10 on ARM, uh, so use your applications like Adobe Cloud, uh, like Lightroom, Premiere, one run on here. Although bear in mind though, this machine is not built for that sort of stuff. Uh, some applications will run in 32 bits uh, thanks to some emulation wizardry, uh, but still this device is not built for that sort of purposes. This is a productivity tool and it's designed so you can work on the go and not worry about having Wi-Fi connectivity issues. Uh, you don't have to worry about security using public Wi-Fi and it's also very slim, uh, very portable and also long battery life so you can have an all day battery life on there. That's what it's designed to be for. As mentioned earlier, you might think, okay, maybe Wi-Fi, uh, public Wi-Fi is the only issue, but in my house, for example, I don't get Wi-Fi quality, a good Wi-Fi quality throughout the house. So having a, a laptop, a device that can easily switch between Wi-Fi and 4G and still remain connected no matter where I am, whether I go to the balcony or not, it's a great bonus. It's a really good bonus for me. The Pro X is also quite pricey. Um, you can get the Surface Pro 7 instead uh, with a full-fledged Windows experience. But you might miss out on that always connected feature. You miss out on how light, weight, and uh, slim it is. Uh, you miss out on that uh, long battery life. You th you're talking 13 hours of battery life or more on here easily. So the question still remains, uh, who's this for? I would say people like uh, students, enterprise workforce, this is great as well. Uh, if you need a dedicated, dedicated device for working on the go, this is also very good. Uh, it's not for your video editing, uh, although you could argue, one could argue that you can have it as a second device, which you can then use to show off your portfolio to your clients anywhere, anytime. So that's it for the Surface Pro X. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, drop them there as well. Let me know. All relevant links will be in the description area, so do check it out. Uh, if this is your first time on the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you'll be one of the first people to know every time there's a video on this channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.